This morning we'll talk about isolation. We'll talk about it from two points of view. Our point of view, which is the mechanical life point of view, and another point of view, which would be a point of view that comes from outside anything that we can comprehend. Something that we may be able to approach. We may be able to come under the influence of it. We may be able to let the rays of its light shine on us and hopefully get a little bit of a tan or have it affect us in some way, warm us in some way. But not anything we can actually reach, not anything we can actually grasp. Like the sun. You can't really get hold of the sun, but you can get yourself more under its influence or less under its influence. This work is like that. Life and everything in it is wearing a mask. If we're to understand our position, we've got to learn to see behind the masks that all of life is wearing and that everything in life is wearing. You remember I said Ospensky had said that nothing in life is what it pretends to be. Think back immediately after the big event with the trade towers in New York City, 9-11, which come to be known as 9-11. People came together in a certain way. People were nicer to each other. The crime rate in New York City plummeted. People all over America were putting out American flags, hanging banners on free freeway overpasses. They had slogans, you know, about unification, about taking care of one another. I know it seems like a distant memory now, but think back, and that's how it was. There was a whole different environment, a whole different atmosphere, a whole different consciousness for our country, for the people of our country, for a while, a little while, not a long time, but a little while. It's not that way now. We could actually say it's pretty much going back to the way it was before that, couldn't we? Because that's the way it is. These extremes are examples of life as third force. Both those extremes, the increase in consciousness that came about after the 9-11 event and where we are now, how life is now, both those extremes, crimes back up, people are... All the freeway, all the signs and the freeways, the American flags are down. All that stuff has changed now. All that stuff has fallen away. We're back to where we were. But both those things are examples of life as third force. The third force in this example is hiding behind two masks, which appear to be quite contradictory, but in truth are not. It's the th same third force behind both of these examples. How consciousness seemed to be raised, Temporarily, people were more aware of one another. They were more aware of each other's feelings. They externally considered one another. And now it's not so much that way. In fact, it's enough not that way to appear to be the opposite. This force works the same way in our personal relationships. This is something from which we're able to benefit if we're willing to study it. Now, it's nice to be able to look out at the world and say, oh yes, New York City and, and America was like this, this, this time and now it's like this. That's great, but let's bring it home to our personal relationships, to what you do in your life with the people who are in your life. The people who are in your life, the ones you want there and the ones you don't want there. The ones you embrace and the ones you push away. Those are the people in your life. Those are your relationships. Oh no, not the ones I push away. I don't want those people. <laughs> those are your relationships. In fact, they are the more important relationships. Oh no, no, you must be mistaken. No, you're mistaken. Because I'm telling you from a work point of view. And anything that doesn't agree with that is a mistake. Because we're not here to justify our existence. We're not here to justify how right we are for doing the stupid things that we do. We are here to examine what we do in the light of this new sun, this other influence that we're trying to get under. We're here to examine ourselves under that light. Under that light, we don't look so good. Where I go to have my hair cut, they have fluorescent lighting. Fluorescent lighting is harsh. It's not a full spectrum light. So it has more green in it and yellow in it. And those tones don't do nice things for people's skin. They don't make you look good. They make you look bad, as a matter of fact. They actually discolor you and make you look bad. They'll make you look older. Not only that, but they will also fatigue you. Full spectrum light, sunlight, for us, is a very uplifting thing. It's a very healthful thing. It's good for us. We thrive in that, just like a plant thrives under. You put a plant under a fluorescent light, it doesn't do as well. They have what they call grow lights. 
that pick out a certain spectrum, a certain sliver of the spectrum, and they focus on that, and the plant thrives. But other lights, they don't do as well. We're the same way. This is like that. I like to look at it like that. I still go and have my hair cut there, but I try not to look in the mirror very often. <laughs> I was just cutting my hair. I look at it, oh, that's just harsh. Oh, <laughs> because the light is so harsh, it's so unkind, so unflattering. We don't like that. We like to look good. And so this work comes and it shines a different kind of light on us. And it's not what we're used to seeing and we don't think we look good. And we're very attached to how we look, so we don't want to be in that light. But that's not why you're here. You're not here to do what you like to do. You didn't come here to hear what you like to hear. You didn't come here to be told what you like to be told. You go other places for that. Here you come to get under the other light, the light that doesn't make you look good, the light that's not designed to make you harmonious with your pictures, the light that's designed to show you what's actually there. We forget that sometimes, which is why you get so upset when certain things are said. <laughs> we forgot that that's why we came here. We forgot that that's our purpose. We forgot that that's why we're here. This is not a social hour. We're here to work. And work is hard. And if you've forgotten that work is hard, it's because you're not doing it. <laughs> that's why. When you forget that work is hard, it's because you're not doing it. And it doesn't have to be horrible. But it is hard. It's difficult because it shows us our contradictions and we don't like to see our contradictions. If we liked to see our contradictions, we wouldn't need this work. We'd be looking at our contradictions all the time and eliminating them. But we're not. We're defending them. We're justifying them. We're hiding them. We're pretending they're not there. We're lying about them. I mean, the, the list goes on of what we do to keep, to stay the way we are. We want to change as long as we don't have to change anything. We want to be different. We just don't want to change anything about us. Because it's all right. It's them. They're the ones. They need to change. Other things need to change, but it's not us. You can't isolate yourself from life if you believe in life. If you believe in life, if you believe that life is going somewhere, life is leading somewhere, if you believe that making more money is going to make you happy, if you believe that being healthier is going to make you a better person, if you believe that being married to this person or that person is going to be better for you, is going to make life better, you can't isolate yourself from life because you are in the web and the spider's coming. You're in the web and see, you're not struggling to get out. You like it in the web. You're just climbing it. You're clawing your way to the top of the web ladder so that you can get a better position in the web. The spider's coming, but who cares? You're a fast crawler. And once you get to the top, you'll be bigger than any spider. You'll be fine. That's our position. Not a very good position, but there it is. You can't isolate yourself from life if you believe in life. If you believe it's going to get better, if you believe it's good in and of itself, that it leads somewhere, you're stuck. You're a part of life. You're part of the machinery. You're stuck in the machine and you're turning with the wheels. You cannot get out of it that way. You just become more and more a part of it. There are two third forces wearing many different masks. Life is one of them and esotericism is the other. Esotericism is just a general term for everything that has ever been introduced to man that came from this other light, this other influence, this other sun, this other source of light, a source of real, genuine, pure light that does not come from in our machine. It's not artificial light that we made in our factory. It's real light. And people discovered that real light. Somebody discovered that real light. And they began to share that real light with man. And it came in a lot of different ways. Buddhism, Christianity, Judaism, Mohammedism. came in a lot of different ways over the centuries. That's esotericism. Now, of course, in almost all of those things, it's nearly completely lost all of its genuine, real, original meaning. In other words, we don't know what those things were when they were fresh. We only know what they've become which is pretty much useless, pretty much. I'm not saying we can't get something from them. We can get something from them. And it's good to get something from them. Get something from whatever you can get it from. But understand that it is so diluted. It is so weakened. It is so watered down now compared to when it was originally given that it's almost, it could almost be called by another name. And in many cases it is. I don't think Jesus went around saying, oh, I've got a new doctrine for you. It's called Christianity. He didn't do that. It was something that people invented later. When they couldn't see the light anymore, all they could do was remember that there was a different kind of light and talk about it. 
when they couldn't get under the influence of that light anymore, when all they had was the memory of it. You live in a cave, and all you have is firelight or incandescent light or fluorescent light or whatever, and you never get out to see the sun. You can remember, and you can draw pictures. You can make paintings on the wall of what the sun looked like, but it's not the sun. And that's what's happened with these teachings that have been handed down over the centuries to mankind. We forgot to get out under the influence of the sun. And so now we just paint paintings and we talk about the sunlight. We talk about sunlight. We talk about the ideas of what sunlight can do. And then we go to tanning salons. And we lie down on little tables and we close the lid on ourselves and we tan ourselves with what we call sunlight. It's not sunlight, but it's, it's our artificial answer to sunlight. Like the Tower of Babel, they took bricks for stone and slime for mortar. It's their answer to stone, the truth. Their answer to love which is the mortar that holds things together. Esotericism, which has unfortunately been trivialized by A influences, has morphed into the other third force, life. Esotericism as we know it today has been trivialized. What does that mean? It, it, it sells books. It sells seminars. Come to this seminar. Come to Hawaii. We're having a seminar on the work in Hawaii. Well, why don't you have it in, in Peoria? Well, because nobody wants to go to Peoria, but people want to go to Hawaii, and you'll get more people to go to Hawaii if you have it in Hawaii. Well, how do you know that? I don't know that. I'm making it all up. But why are you smiling? But because there's a certain lightness to the truth, isn't there? When the truth is told, there's this little contradiction. Oh, ouch. Do they really have seminars in Hawaii for the work? Well, I don't know. But if they do, I wonder why Hawaii? Why not Peoria? Oh, it's more central. Hawaii is more central. <laughs> more central. More central to what? You know, it doesn't make any sense to me. But if you look at it from the other point of view, from an A influence point of view, it makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Well, that would sell. Las Vegas would sell. Have work seminars and workshops in Las Vegas. That's a good idea. Let's do that. I'll bet people will come to that. You have them in Peoria. Who's going to go to Peoria? They don't have any hotels in Peoria. That's the only reason we don't do them in Peoria. Sure they do. I've been to Peoria. They have hotels. Well, you can't get 10,000 people in Peoria. Well, don't worry about that. You're having a real work seminar. You're not going to have 10,000 people there. I don't care if Gurdjieff comes back from the grave. Why? Because this work isn't popular. Why? Because it's work and work is hard. Because it's unflattering light that shined on us that we are asked to shine on ourselves. It doesn't make us look good. It's like Peoria compared to Hawaii. Where would you rather be? In Peoria in January or in Hawaii in January? Go ahead, lie to me and say Peoria. <laughs> I don't care. I know where you really want to be because we're here. We want to be where it's comfortable. We want to be where it's warm. We want to be where it's hip slick and cool. We want to be where it's good. We don't want to be just any old place. We want to be where we should be in our right place, which is Hawaii, not Peoria. So what happens is trivialized esotericism ends up being the third force of life. Man is a self-developing creation. He's supposed to finish the job that's been started. As he is, he's good to go in life to serve life's purposes. We don't have to do much, just let life develop us. What will life do? Well, life will educate us to a certain point. Life will prepare us to get married and have children. Life will prepare us to go get a job, life will prepare us to produce this or produce that. Life will prepare us to either go to prison or be a CEO and somehow stay out of prison. I don't know how that works, but life somehow makes it work that way. I'm not saying that all CEOs belong in prison, but a lot of them do. What, you didn't know that? Did you know that? Okay, I'm just checking, just a reality check here. It's like, yeah, a lot of CEOs belong in prison, but why is that? Well, because they're thieves and liars. Well, why is that? Well, because life made them. And it serves life purposes to be a thief and a liar. But it doesn't serve the purpose of the work to be a thief and a liar. Oh, it's an entirely different matter. That doesn't mean you can't be a thief and a liar in the work. You can. You can be anything in the work. Because you don't have to do it to be in it. All you have to do is talk about it. All you have to do is trivialize it. All you have to do is turn it into A influence. Which is easy enough. People are doing it every day. But another education awaits man if he's so inclined. If not... He'll die like a dog. Well, what does that mean, he'll die like a dog? What that means is he'll die like a dog, just naturally. He'll just live his life. He'll serve life's purposes. And at the end of it, he will become food 
for whatever life is feeding that day. If it's the flames and he's cremated, well, then he'll feed that. If it's to be buried, then he'll feed that. If it's just to be thrown out on the side of the road, then he'll feed that. He'll die like a dog, just a part of life. But this other education leads to something else. Personality is what life made. The essential you is what awaits you if you choose this second education, this other education, this alternate education. As long as personality runs us, our third force, the third force operating in our lives, will be life. Because personality is a creation of life. It is manufactured by life. It's not even a creation. It's a combination. It's what's been acquired, what life scooped up and put in a mound. And that's these different mounds here, or different personalities that life scooped up and combined these things together. We all obey something. If we want to change the fact that life is our third force, if we want to change that, we're going to have to change which third force influences us. But we don't know how to do that. And this is where the second education comes in. We don't know how to do that. We need to be educated how to do that. We need to have the right ideas. We need to have right knowledge. And right knowledge is supposed to lead us to right action. And right action is supposed to lead us to right understanding. And right understanding is supposed to lead us to be able to connect the dots in the right way. Well, there's a right way and a wrong way. The right way is the way that works. The wrong way, unfortunately, works too. But it just takes you to a different place. The wrong way in life works. Third force, life as third force works. And it works flawlessly and effortlessly. You don't have to do anything. Just do what life told you to do. What life tell you to do. Life told me to procreate. How did life tell you to do that? It gave me urges and I couldn't help myself. Oh, does anybody know that one? And of course, the younger you are, the better you know it. The older you are, oh yes, I remember that. It was awful. But you try and tell the younger ones, it's like, I'm going to have fun while I'm young. Good, have fun. <laughs> Oh, all I had was babies. Well, that's the way life works. It wasn't as much fun as it was. Wasn't it Rachel who brought this this thing at school? They bring this this like this yeah doll kind of a baby doll. I guess it cries and does all these things that that, that real babies do. And they bring it home and they have to take care of it. And they go cries at night and they got to get up and they got to do this and they got to do. And it's like suddenly all the fun of having a little baby isn't so much fun. The reality of it. The reality of. I can't get any sleep. This kid will never shut up. What's wrong? Why are you crying? Why don't you tell me something? Why don't you, why don't you stop crying? Why do I have to change you? Can't you change yourself? You know, why don't you feed yourself? Why do I have to feed you? It just gets old fast. The reality, the whole idea is to try and curb this insane thing that's going on today where people have no responsibility when it comes to sex. They have no responsibility when it comes to breeding. We've removed all of the religious stops. Well, you can't tell people that. Well, you tell them about birth control. Let them do what they want. Well, now they're doing it. You happy now? Oh, yeah, now I'm happy. Good. What are you going to do with all these kids? Whoa, abortion, abortion. That's the answer. We'll kill them all. Great idea. What about the ones you can't kill? Uh, we could sterilize these kids. Well, what about the ones who you want to have? We can, we can just sterilize the, the dumb ones and we'll, and we'll keep the smart ones so that they can still reproduce. Oh, great idea. You see how complex it all gets? And then you've got all these judgments in there, and you've got somebody deciding who's what. You've got a committee deciding who's going to have babies and who's not going to have babies. Well, you can only have this many babies. Well, you can only have boy babies, no girl babies. We've got, we got a limit on girl babies because we've got too many of them now, so only boy babies. You see, it's like, does this remind you of Egypt and Pharaoh and the boy babies? You know, does this remind you of China? You can only have two. Does this remind you of what people do? This is not new. This is not some science fiction. This is history. This is current events. This is how false personality, this is how life as third force handles us. I want to be under a different influence, something more sane, something more conscious. If you want to be under a different influence, something more sane, something more conscious, something that actually leads somewhere, not just to the compost heap, then you want something else as third force, not life. You want something else as third force in your life. If that's what you want, you're in the right place. The irony is life's idea of unity is to divide us into antagonistic groups. What was the unity of 9-11? Well, we were divided into antagonistic groups. <laughs> what do you mean? We were all getting along. Yes, because we had a common enemy, the terrorists, Osama bin Laden, or whomever. 
I don't care what name you hang on it, what name you pin on it. Life's idea of unity is to divide us into antagonistic groups. Look at it. Don't take my word for it. We all obey something. The most enslaved are those who feel they, the, they themselves are the most independent. You're independent, you're the most enslaved. Because there is no such thing as independent on this planet. There is no such thing. But we're all striving for it. Why? Because life's trick, the third force of life, its trick is unification through division. Well, what do you mean? How could that be unification through division? If you're independent, you're divided. Now, there's no such thing as independent, but life gives the illusion that there is. It holds out the carrot that there is. Because it built us, we obey it. We obey our master. Life made the false personality. The false personality bows down to life and says, yes, master. What I'm saying is you're worshiping a false god. That the essential you, that you don't know, was created by a real god. And that if you worship that real god and obey his commandments, you will get yourself out of this place run by a false god, the false personality. It's a kind of a religious way of putting it. I know I don't usually do that, but it's another way to look at it. And we should look at this from as many different angles as we can, because we want to understand. You know, I'm not interested in being right or making other people wrong. I'm interested in understanding. When you isolate yourself from people, you aid the third force of life. You are working for the false god. This work says don't isolate yourself from people, and especially don't isolate yourself from the people you want to isolate yourself from. That's what this work says. Where does it say that? I, I never saw that. I just said it. I just said it. What are you going to do with that? Object? Pick it apart? Or look at this work? Work. Now, where do you do the most, most work? In a relationship where the person agrees with everything that you say, or in a relationship where there is not a lot of agreement? Follow it down. Track it down. Look at it. We don't want to do that. It's uncomfortable to do that. Life, as we know it, divides and the work unites. It takes effort to unify yourself with people in the work. Instead, we isolate ourselves from people in the work and unite with people in life, calling it work. Well, I'm working. I'm working out there with people in life. Right. It's much more productive than the work I have here with these people. Right. It is. And the reason it is, is because you don't want to work. You want to hide. That's the reason. But of course, if you don't like that, then I don't know what I'm talking about. So it's perfect. We're perfect. Our prison is perfect. We lock ourselves in and we swallow the key. People will not work on themselves because they don't want to. What? What do you mean people won't work on themselves? Oh, people will not work on themselves. Why? Because they don't want to. That can't be true. Oh, it's true. That's why we have workshops in Hawaii and not in Peoria. Because people will not work on themselves because they don't want to. You've got to somehow tantalize them, somehow trick them into working on themselves. Get them in Hawaii. Maybe, maybe then you can throw enough against the wall and something will stick. I don't think so. But hey, give it a try. It's okay with me. Try it. Go to Hawaii. See if you can work better there. <laughs> the whole idea is ludicrous, isn't it? Yet, we buy it. Now, the truth is, you can work in Hawaii, and you can work in Peoria, and you can work anywhere if you wish to work. The key is not where you are, it's what you wish. If you wish to work, if you have seen the value of the work, and there's only one way to see the value of the work, you've got to see what a mess you are. But, but, but I'm not a mess. Okay, well, then you don't need to work, do you? No, those other people do. Well, fine. I think maybe you should get them in Hawaii in a workshop. You can tell them what they need to do. Somebody needs to do that, and I'm not going to do it. People expect everything to be better than it is, but they don't see that they've got to change in order for things to get better. Well, how are things going to get better? Well, they're going to come out with new inventions. Technology is going to get better. You know, there will be a time when everybody will be, everybody will have food. Yeah. There will be a time when all disease is conquered. Yeah, yeah, don't you know? There are, there are guys right now who are working on a cure for cancer. Uh-huh. And when that happens, then it's all going to be better. Yeah, it's going to be good. Just hold on. Don't worry about it. Just hold on and keep doing what you're doing. That's life's answer. It's a great answer, especially if that's what you want. Boy, that's a good answer. Ooh, that's a good answer. Doesn't that feel good? Yeah, they're going to all they're going to fix it. All the smart guys are going to fix it while we're just going about the business of watching TV and drinking beer and eating pizza. <laughs> they're going to fix it. We're going to do, we're going to just, they got new stuff that we're going to Blu-ray discs and we're going to watch better TV, you know, HD TV. We don't have to do anything except just that. You know, they're going to do it. Those other guys are going to do it. Yeah.
You got to change yourself. Oh, no, no, no. Don't tell me that. This third force with which we're trying to come in contact does not tend to break people up, but rather unites them. Well, I offer to you as evidence this group, which does not belong together. And look around you. These are not the people you choose to be around. These are the people the work has chosen for you to be around. The flawed, mistaken work has chosen for you to be around. <laughs> but don't worry, you're mending it. You're separating yourself from them. You're only around the right ones that the work has chosen. The wrong ones the work has chosen, you put some distance between you and them. Those people, them, those people. They're not your people. Those people, the work made a mistake. Yeah, work's always making mistakes like that, I've noticed. But thank God that we're smart enough to correct it. Thank God that we're clever enough to be on top of the work so that we can fix it where it's flawed. We really get ourselves in a pickle, don't we? See, this is why we learn a common language. It's difficult to speak to people about the work because they easily become suspicious and they always become resentful. You're asleep. I am not. You can't do. I'll break your head. What do you think about that? I can do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it always makes them resentful, doesn't it? Didn't you, weren't you resentful? You can't do anything. You're not awake. You're not one. You can't keep your word. You're a liar. <laughs> if you say you're not resentful, you're a liar because we do resent that. So we learn a common language. People who don't do this work, people who are influenced by the third force that is life, they have the illusion that they're conscious, that they can do independently from life, independently from the circumstances of life. They think that they have cut the strings of the marionette. See, we're marionettes and the strings are connected to life. And whatever life does, it pulls us this way or that way. Oh no, not me, I make my own decisions. I'm my own man. I'm in charge. What I say goes. I make the rules here. Uh -huh. Those people are not in the work. <laughs> I guess that means we're not in the work most of the time. It does, doesn't it? It means we're not in the work most of the time. These illusions keep us under the power of the third force of life. We can't isolate ourselves so nothing extra can grow in us. We're like seeds that live and die without ever undergoing any growth. And that's what this life has in store for us. If we continue to allow it, to be the third force for us. With no right idea about our existence on earth, we can't isolate ourselves from life influences that are keeping us at our current level of being. We constantly fall back into sleep because we can't isolate ourselves from the third force of life. The hypnotism of life keeps on keeping on. Every time you think you've got it beat, every time you think you've crawled out of the hole, it sucks you back in because it never is turned off. You see, it's a giant vacuum cleaner that's going all the time, and it's constantly sucking us into it. It's always on. You know, it's the it's the the hypnotism, you know, the hypnotism little wheel they used to show on on television, you know, and and the cartoons and things that, you know, and you'd look at that and you'd be hypnotized, you know, and it's life is that only it's perpetual motion. It's constantly going, and it's everywhere you look. We've got to isolate ourselves from the third force of life without physically isolating ourselves. That means we've got to do it here and now in our present circumstances. Oh, no, don't tell me that. The people that are in your life are the right people in your life. The work did bring you the right people. Now, work on becoming the right person instead of making them the right people. That's what this work is about. If you change your being, your life changes. Prove it. <laughs> you prove it. My evidence for that is prove it yourself. You are the lab. You are the experiment. These are the tools that you have to work with. Now prove it. Prove that that is true. Prove that you can change your life by changing your level of being. Prove that. You've already proved that life can keep you dangling by strings. You've already proved that. If you haven't proved that to yourself, fine. Prove that to yourself. How? Observe yourself without identifying, without criticizing. Just simply observe your life. You know how to do that. If you choose not to do that, that's your business, but you know how to do it. You've been taught how to do it. You have done it. Now it's a matter of actually applying it on a daily basis. We continually end up quarreling, but the problem is, is we've got to begin to argue with our being, the kind of person that we are. Instead, you quarrel with me and you quarrel with the work. That's not what the work says. How do you know that's what the work says? That's not quarreling with me? That's not quarreling with the work? But I think that maybe what you said is right, but I object to the way you said it. That's not quarreling. Now, the way I say it is important. Well, you, it was your tone of voice. Now, that's important. That's not internal consideration. No, 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 it's your problem. 
I know, I'm not in Hawaii either. I'm in Peoria. You don't like Peoria. You want Hawaii. Go to Hawaii. Nobody's, I'm looking at your ankles. Nobody's got you in irons here. You're not shackled. Go to Hawaii if that's where it's at. Maybe it's in Miami, South Beach. I don't know. Go there. Maybe it's in India for some of you. I've met people recently. It's in India. They're going to India to meditate with so-and-so. Why? That's, that's the place. That's where you, they'll really get it. That's where the meditation is the sweetest. Why? Well, that's the sweet spot on the earth. Okay. But the fourth way, our way, says that this is the sweet spot. Oh, it's wrong. <laughs> it's wrong. It doesn't know anything about the sweet spot. It never said anything about, yes, this is it. This is the sweet spot. This is it. Your life. You. Your, 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 your false personality. That's the sweet spot. That's the spot. The sweet spot. That's the spot from which you can change your level of being. You can't change your level of being from any other spot. You are in the spot. This is it. Now, that's good news, but you don't look that happy about it. It kind of, kind of makes me wonder if you can hear the good news or not, or if you've got your life ears on, or if you've got your work ears on. I know I sound like Miss June in Romper Room. <laughs> Have you got your work ears on, or if you've got your life ears on? Have you got your work eyes in or have you got your life eyes in? And it's so true. I mean, really, I know I'm putting it in a very childish way, but so our essence is just like children. You know, stopped growth around four or five. So it's perfect for romper room. Work romper room right here in Vista, California. If you observe your being from what the work teaches, a sword is introduced into your peaceful existence with yourself. You begin to see your contradictions. Ew, I didn't know I, oh, I like the videos. I didn't know I looked like that. Oh yeah, that's exactly how you look. Oh, I didn't think I looked like that. That, really what I look like? Yeah, that's really what you look like. Oh, okay, well, thank you. I'll be forgetting that now as quickly as possible. Um, thank you and goodbye. Our pictures of ourselves are our most darling possessions. Oh boy, do we know that or what? We have these pictures of ourselves and the video didn't match up. Didn't match up. So what do we do? Well, we don't take the video home with us. We take our pictures home with us because they're our most darling possessions. We just love them. They're worth having. They're good keepsakes. There are three great work practices that we must remember and employ. First, self-remembering. Second, non-identifying. And third, not making accounts against others. Okay, well, you're fine on those two, but the third one, that sucks. Get it out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Look, have fun with those people. This is it. Nobody's getting out of this alive. You're going to die. You're going to die. You want to die like a dog? Just end up on the compost heap, the way life pushes everybody through on this conveyor belt to death? Or would you like to learn something else in the process of being conveyed toward death? being conveyed toward the compost heap. Would you like to learn something else? Would you like to use your time and learn something else? Something of value, something that can last past the compost heap. That's what this way offers us. Well, what exactly? I don't know. Why don't you find out? Why don't you try and find out? Do this and you'll begin to isolate yourself from the third force of life. You'll bring yourself under the influence of the third force of the work. The work third force can change you because it will gradually make personality more passive. Seeing our level of being gives us something new, some new thing about which we can think, something new upon which we can work. This is why it's so important to observe yourself. If you do not observe yourself uncritically, regularly, you will not have any new thing upon which to work. You'll just work on the same thing you worked on yesterday, and that means mechanical. If you're working on what you were working on last week, it's time for a change. Observe yourself. Find something new upon which to work, about which to think.